Welcome to La La Land, baby. As Meghan Markle prepares for her new arrival, a British expat reveals the truth about giving birth in L.A. From lipo after a C-section to breastfeeding rock stars and Diana Ross singing live at your baby group. Meghan Markle is going to give birth to second child, a baby girl, in Los Angeles. Sarah Ivins who is a native Brit, says City has a laid-back, hippie, organic lifestyle. She reveals key memories from her own experience of giving birth in the States. To stay up to date with my latest videos for cool news, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel Stubborn News by clicking the button in the right below corner of this video. Just as Meghan Markle plans to do, I had my second baby in Los Angeles. The Duchess hails from the city and is more used to the Tinseltown rules, but she's never had a baby there, and it may come as a culture shock. She had first child, Archie, in the UK, as did I, a native Brit, so she'll be finding LA an odd place to be pregnant. There's the laid-back, hippie, organic lifestyle, but there's ego, image and vast price tags, too. The Sussexes already know they're having a girl, asking the baby's gender is standard in L.A. I found out I was expecting a girl the minute I could at 18 weeks, as did most of my stateside friends. We argued it would help us feel prepared, and a lot goes into that when you get pregnant in L.A. The California mamas I met had reflexologists, dermatologists, nutritionists, acupuncturists and yoga teachers on speed dial. Some even spent fortunes on crystal healers and astrologers to get birth charts drawn up for their future offspring. One woman hired a celebrity interior designer to create lighting in the nursery that mimicked twilight at the nearby Joshua Tree National Park. She thought it would be restful. Then there's the baby sprinkle party Megan will probably have. Baby showers are for first babies, and it's considered crass in LA to have a big party and a long gift list for subsequent children. Before Archie's arrival, Meghan had a fabulous New York shower hosted by Serena Williams in the penthouse at The Mark, a dreamy uptown hotel, where guests including Amal Clooney and Oprah's bestie Gail King enjoyed a flower arranging class. Her sprinkle is sure to be just as sophisticated. Just a few close friends, offering thoughtful gifts rather than necessities such as cribs and car seats. I held mine at shutters on the beach, overlooking the Pacific Ocean. Friends gave me an embroidered pair of Ugg boots, a Sophie La Giraffe chew toy and piles of Aiden plus Anai swaddling blankets. One friend bought an amber necklace, a must-have for Californian babies. Locals swear it helps with teething. My group of British mothers wolfed down the afternoon tea, although it is standard practice at these gatherings for women to stare hungrily at the delights without touching anything. One friend recalled getting teary as a $300 cake was binned at a sprinkle, because no one would tuck in, she didn't want to cut a slice and stand out as being too British. Home births, which Meghan is rumored to favor, are popular and of course paparazzi-free. You get to invite your own photographer, which many of my friends did. They set up a water pool in their dining room, get in surrounded by their partners, their children, their doula, or female birthing pal in attendance. It might be fun for Archie to be there as his baby sister arrives. Lori Bregman is the doula and wellness empowerment coach that all the rich and or famous West Coast mothers want as they give birth. If Megan does go for a hospital delivery, she has two a list options, Cedars-Sinai or St. John's. 
Meghan gave birth to Archie at the Portland in London, a private hospital where births cost £20,000 on average, however, even that doesn't come close to offering the A-list concierge facilities and lavish suites of Cedars Sinai, which the Duchess may well choose, although it is over an hour's drive from her Montecito home. Cedars Sinai's VVIP maternity ward is the creme de la creme. Victoria Beckham had daughter Harper there. Kate Hudson, Courtney Kardashian, and Penelope Cruz chose it too. Stars with big entourages prefer this hotel, Sari Hospital, as the deluxe maternity suites have three bedrooms and two bathrooms, and include a personal 24-hour doula and vegan meals for mum. Guests pay extra for about four thousand dollars per night, a bargain when you're busy selling the rights to your first family magazine shoot. But the Starbucks in the lobby is full of reporters nosing around, and one fellow Londoner, who'd had her baby boy a year before, told me it felt like the social scene at Soho House, and maybe not so good for new mothers. At my doctor's suggestion I planned to go to the Maria Shriver Nursery of St. John's Health Center, the more low-key option for celebs wanting to avoid the paparazzi. Maria gave birth to her and husband Arnold Schwarzenegger's four children there and liked it so much, she became patron of the nursery, where newborns are taken while mothers rest. Katie Holmes and Tom Cruise had Surrey there, American football star Tom Brady flew in on his private jet to be there for his ex-girlfriend, actress Bridget Moynihan, as she gave birth to their son, leaving new girlfriend Giselle Bündchen at home. Lisa Marie Presley and Brooke Shields had their babies there, too. Like Megan, I was considered a geriatric mother I was 38 when I had Matilda, the Duchess will be 39, and planned C-sections were becoming more usual. Friends said it was because the doctors didn't like to mess up their Palm Springs golfing weekends with ad hoc births, but apparently a listers found it handy, too. Busy people find it useful to plan their diaries, my doctor said, and those in the public eye find it convenient to get a tummy tuck and liposuction at the same time. He laughed at my shocked expression. What? You thought those actresses really lost their pregnancy weight with exercise and breastfeeding? I'd been editor-in-chief of the U.S. version of OK! magazine for five years, so I shouldn't have been so naive. I wasn't keen on a caserine, like all Californian mothers to be I'd been on a hypnobirthing course, I wanted to breathe my way through a natural labor with the help of aromatherapy oils, scented candles and British grit, but when I was diagnosed with placenta previa, when a low-lying placenta covers the cervix, I had no choice and a C-section was scheduled. Good, that means you'll be able to get your highlights done the day before, an American TV presenter friend said seriously, and get a long-lasting blow dry, and your brows and lashes tinted, too, those photos will haunt you forever. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more.